For this lesson, open the Supercharger Fusion Archive file using Create Design from File, and then save the design to your active project. As you can see, we have an assembly. It's a rather elaborate one, but as with all assemblies, there's only a handful of types of joints that bring it all together. In fact, let's review the joints for this assembly. First, I'll turn the joints folder on to display the various joints. As you can see, it looks like it's all pretty much revolute and rigid joints. In fact, if we expand the joints folder, we'll see that's exactly what we have, revolute and rigid joints. For rotating machinery or anything that has wheels or cams, that's not uncommon at all. Many assemblies are bolted together, which a rigid joint works perfect for, and many things have spinning parts, which Revolut is fantastic at. In this lesson, what we'll do is put components where they belong. We'll go to the Assemble tools and start the Joint tool. You can also use the J key as a keyboard shortcut to start the Joint tool. The component that you want to select first is the component that you want to move. In this case, I want to move the rear cover. So as I move near this face, you can see there are a lot of options to choose from. One that is very natural is to just go ahead and pick a bolt center. After selecting it, you'll see the component fade out as it's no longer available for selection. And I'll orbit and find the appropriate bolt hole in the housing to fit to. When I select it, the component will move into place and animate the type of joint that's currently active. For this type of component placement, we should use a rigid joint. You can see in the preview, the two components shake as they are held in place. If one moves, the other moves. There's no need for an offset at this time, although we could perhaps think about offsetting a distance and even creating a situation where we could easily create a gasket in the context of this design. But for now, we'll leave the offset at zero Taking a closer look, I see that the bolt for the drain and the bolt for the filler are still out in space. The reason for this is, even though this is a simple assembly, Fusion 360 doesn't necessarily know that. Instead of grabbing a cover with two bolts attached to it, I might have grabbed an entire engine assembly. So for speed and better performance and better clarity, it will only move the component that I selected the first joint origin on and connect it to the component that the second joint origin is on. That's why these other components are faded out, even though they're not necessarily attached directly to the second component. Once we're satisfied with the joint placement, we'll click OK, and all the bolts will go back to their original position. Now what I want to do is go ahead and place this bolt to hold the gear on the upper shaft. What I maybe should have done is put that on first. But, but there's no need to undo the last joint. We can simply take advantage of visibility options while we're in the context of a joint. I could of course seek out the component and turn it off ahead of time, but just to make sure we're all comfortable with the flexibility of Fusion, let's go ahead and start the joint tool again, this time by simply pressing J on the keyboard. I'll rotate, zoom in closer to the bottom of the head of this bolt, where we see we have modeled threads. So finding the exact center by picking around this edge could be difficult. In fact, sometimes components are very tight or elements that we could select for joint origins are very close together and it can be hard to pick the right one. To make it easier, you can hover over the face that you want to apply a joint origin to, hold Control in Windows or Command in Mac, and now as you move over the entire design, it will only show you joint origin options on that face. So as I move closer, it will help me find that center, which could very well be the centroid of the face, but I believe it's the center. I'll click. Of course, that component fades out. And now I need to select the washer at the end of the shaft, which is under the rear cover. So while we're in the middle of the joint tool, we can come over and turn off the rear cover. Select the hole in the washer and have the bolt slide into place. Now, of course, we could use a rigid type joint or a Revolut will work just fine as well. We'll click OK 
and now our assembly is put together. You'll see that the cover remains off. Now, when I go to grab a gear to test the mechanism, you'll see that the entire model is moving. That isn't correct. But what also happens is I'm offered an opportunity, since I've shifted its position, to either capture this new position for the model or to restore it back to where it was. The problem I'm having is there are no grounded components. It isn't always necessary to ground a component, but if you want to exercise a mechanism inside of your assembly, you'll need to. Now, which component should be grounded? The rule of thumb that I always refer to people is what is the thing that is either going to be stuck to the floor or bolted to something else? In this case, the housing fits the bill. As I click on the housing, you'll see it highlights in the browser. I'll come over, right click, and then we can select ground from the context menu. You'll see the thumbtack icon up here. And now selecting a gear will allow me to turn and see how the mechanism was developed using joints in Fusion 360.